Hi everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today we are talking about anima and animus. So what I found is that anima and animus are Jung's concepts of the inner feminine in men and the inner masculine in women. What that means is the anima or animus represents your unconscious or sometimes conscious ideas of the other gender, how you see the other gender, how you look at them, in what way, positive or negative. The truth is, we all start out with a rather primitive view of the other sex. The truth is, we don't know what it's like, well, men don't know what it's like to be a woman. Don't know what it's like, what women feel, or how they experience things, or how they relate to the world. And the truth is, women don't know how it means, or what it means to be a man. Patreon.com slash Eric Thor. On Patreon, you can select your tier level and how much you want to support my channel with. As a supporter, you get full access to my content, premium videos, and all kinds of benefits. I also offer typing applications and coaching. So check out the Patreon page and enjoy the rest of my video. These are things that take time to learn and to understand. And sometimes during this process, we develop negative views of the other sex or we struggle. Trauma and things that happen to us can cause us to develop negative ideas of the other sex. Our family, our dad, or brother, or sister, or mother, friends we meet, and other people might bias our view of the other sex. And so a lot of time, our views of men or our views of women are socially constructed. That means sometimes we've developed cultural ideas or bias of, of what it means to be a woman, or what a woman should be like, or what a man should be like. So if we start out with a pretty narrow view on gender, what that means is we think all men are like me and all women are like the women that I met. And we outsource and we project these kind of expectations on them. They should be like this. They should think like that. They should act like this. We start out like learning these kind of uh, cultures. And it seems like we, it seems like the anima and animus is most important when we are dealing with people of the other sex or things for that matter that we think represent the other sex. So a lot of the time, to me, the interest, the concept of masculinity or femininity is most interesting when we study how we relate to and build a relationship with the world around us. How do we connect with the world? And how do we connect with other people? So what I would like you to do is I want you to think about, you know, what kind of associations you put on men, what kind of things and experiences and attributes you think are manly, what kind of things you think are female or womanly. And then I want you to think about what you're attracted to, what kind of things do you find attractive in a man or in a woman, what kind of things help you build a connection to another person, what kind of things make you feel like you have a relationship or a bond or something with another person. Understanding these things, you understand also how you approach the dating world and how you approach relationships. A lot of time, it seems that these kind of opposites are necessary to build a sense of attraction. A lot of time, it seems that we need an idea of what is manly or what is womanly in order to build some kind of relationship to one another, in order to establish that there is attraction or that this is dating, this is not friendship. When uh, these kind of things are evap evaporated, when the idea of masculinity or femininity becomes too blurred, when our interactions become too similar what tends to happen is we tend to go into more of a friend zone that means we move more towards a sense of friendliness we feel like we are connected in the sense that we are the same that means also when a relationship and because a relationship can start out with two people that feel like they are polar opposites they can feel attention and they can feel an attraction because they are different but when they start mellowing out that attraction starts to disappear the more alike you become the more similar you are, the more you start taking on the same role, the less that dynamic disappears. That is, uh, related to our building of attraction or a sexual relationship. Now, this can also be observed to some extent, and I can't speak for uh, homosexuality or for people that aren't straight, uh, but these kind of dynamics to some extent also seem to exist in these kind of relationships from my point of view. And you're free to tell me I'm wrong or to share if I'm misinformed or if that's not true at all. 
But I do notice that this seems to be important in heterosexual relationships. I do notice that in my own relationships. I notice that if I take on a more manly role, or if I am more the initiator, if I am more the person that builds and initiates the connection, the other person tends to be more open. That means I feel I have to act a certain way in order to build a level of attraction with another person. I feel that I have to fill a certain role or live up to certain expectations in order to be attractive or in order to be interesting to the other sex. Now, the thing is, these kind of things don't necessarily match because sometimes you'll be on a date with a person that has completely different expectations to what you do. Different expectations of what a man should be like or what a woman should be like. The truth is, you know, there are multiple ways to be masculine. You can be a masculine introvert or a masculine extrovert. And, you know, some people will think that it's masculine to be extroverted and some will think it's masculine to be introverted. And I think that's interesting because <laughs> the truth is, Sometimes our views of this is subjective, and uh, that's why probably relationships are so complicated. I'm not going to be attracted to every single girl I meet. I'm not going to be, or I don't, I, don't, I don't expect that every woman is going to be attracted to every single man they meet. So there are more factors to play here. And the truth is, I think to some extent, uh, our idea of masculinity and femininity is uh, in the state of play. We're constantly testing the boundaries of what that means, what that will be. So probably what we see and what we thought of as masculinity and femininity in the 1900s is very different to what it is today. So a person that moralizes and says men have to be like this or men have to be like that is probably going to speak to some people but not all people because there are going to be women that say, yeah, that's great, I like that. And there are going to be women that say, no, I don't like when men do that. And so you have to think about that. What's your dynamic and how do you relate to it? It also, because Jung also believed that the concept of the anima and animus was in development. Uh, typically, the inner masculine in the woman was first represented by like a Tarzan-like figure. And the inner feminine in a man was represented by a mother. Yes, men can sometimes make the mistake of projecting the experiences of a mother, not their mother, but a mother on women, expecting women to fill that kind of a role and expecting them to only fill and function within that role. That means a woman is only interesting to the extent that she's able to uh, provide a role of a mother to them. And that's uh, typically terrible and typically the result of a broken relationship and a bad dynamic. Similarly, if women can only relate to men as Tarzan-like figures, if women can only relate to men as uh, impulsive or primitive, most likely they're going to have negative views about men and they're going to be annoyed and frustrated by men. They'll feel like men are big man babies. They'll feel like men are going to cause them to roll their eyes all the time. <laughs> and, you know... Uh, I think this also explains to some extent, you know, the tension between the sexes and feminism. Because, uh, and I should say, I consider myself a feminist in the most classical way possible in that I believe all genders are equal. I mean, everyone should be equal, not in the sense that everyone should be the same, but that everyone should have the same opportunities to succeed in work, in life, and in relationships, and in family. So that's what I would say is the most important, for everyone to be able to succeed for everyone to have equal opportunities. I don't need everyone to be the same. And the way I see it, everyone is different. So I'm not here to tell anyone who to be or how to live. But the tension between genders, you know, like the anger towards men from some women and the anger towards women from some men is the result often of our personal relationship to the feminine or the masculine, not political. That means what we personally experience is being put out as a political thing, is being broadcasted as a political explanation of all men or all women, despite the fact that that couldn't possibly be true. Not all women could fill the role that you expect them to. Not all men could be the kind of villain that you're looking to <laughs> explain. I also want to say, it's not enough to talk about the other gender. Like, it's easy to get into the trap of talking about how all men need to do this, or all men are so terrible, or all men are worthless, or whatever. 
But you have to also define your own responsibilities. If you want to make a difference, you can't get too upset about out the realities because you can't control how men choose to deal with being men. You can't control what men do or how men choose to live. You can only control how you choose to deal with that and what that means to you. So you have to define for yourself some responsibilities. If men are like this, what kind of role do I need to fill? Or what kind of things do I need to do in order to make a difference or in order to make things better? If women are constantly being like that or treating you badly or uh, causing you to feel bad about women, you need to think about what do I need to do in order to shape up and improve myself in order to, uh, what you say, not fit within that, that dynamic, but to improve it. Think about what you can do, what personal example you can set in order to uh, make it easier for other people to connect with and relate to you and for, in order to make it easier for you to connect with yourself. The blame game where we attack the other gender is pointless and self-destructive. I also believe uh, it's interesting to think about anima or animus because truth is we don't really think about how we see the other gender. A lot of time these expectations become unconscious. We, I know some people that want to put their head in the sand. They say, if we don't talk about gender, gender will cease to exist. If I don't talk about sex or the fact that sex are, exists, then it's not going to exist. Some people will build up these kind of walls and blind themselves, hoping that, oh, I'm not going to be affected by it. But the truth is, you're affected by it. Either you're affected by it consciously or unconsciously. So you have to talk about it. You have to talk about your impressions on gender with your partner. What do you expect from them? How do you see them? What are your previous relationships with men or women? And how did you experience that? And what was bad about that? And what would you like to change about that? So I want you to think about that in terms of dating. Think about your dating preferences. What kind of women do you swipe right or left on and why? What kind of men do you swipe left or right on and why? <laughs> what, how do you experience, you know, uh, what kind of things do you find attractive? What kind of things interest you? What kind of things uh, make you feel connected to the other gender? So beyond that, certainly masculinity and femininity can be important for a wider range of things. Certainly, you can use masculinity and femininity to explain a lot of things. I see objective personalities using masculinity and femininity to explain the difference between people that are assertive or turbulent. I think that's a bad choice, personally. The reason why I think it's a bad choice is because that's just one form of masculinity, just one form of femininity. So you have to think about how your concept of masculinity actually fits with being masculine because through this masculinity first and foremost has to do with sex and gender femininity first and foremost has to do with sex gender and relationships and dating so your gender most matters is most significant based on how you engage with those dynamics everything else can certainly be affected by gender can certainly be influenced by your sexuality whether you're straight or not straight, whether you're, uh, how you identify yourself or your gender or not. Uh, but they are secondary to it. So gender is most interesting when you think about how you form relationships, how you build a family dynamic, or how you set up a family or relationship dynamic with other people. These are my thoughts on anima and animus and on femininity and masculinity. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree. And thank you so much for watching.